I'm Scott Allen Miller and this is my daily life living in Latin America. Today we are back in Buenos Aires. Today we are in Palermo, Hollywood and I'm doing exactly what everyone has told me not to do. That is walking around on the street with a camera. Apparently this is not a safe city for filming. And I don't know how seriously I take that, but Valentina says she's seen multiple people get robbed on the street doing exactly this. So, and everybody has the same story and everything you read online, tourists are like, yeah, God, got robbed in uh, Buenos Aires. So uh, it's definitely something to be a little bit concerned about. We're gonna take our chances. It is afternoon. We're gonna head out and do a walk in Palermo, Hollywood here in downtown Buenos Aires. All right, we're gonna start here. If you're wondering where we are, we are on Paraguay and it is raining pretty solidly. It's not a heavy rain, but it's a, it's a real rain. And uh, this is the Dia, which is kind of like a little tiny grocery store. I'm gonna turn to the right, right here, and uh, head down. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty wet and cold here for sure. But it's a beautiful city for walking. Unfortunate that People have to worry about walking on the street so much. You can see high rises between the buildings. It's a very built up city. But the plus side, homicide rates in Argentina are outrageously low, but street robbery is high. So it's all uh, perspective. iPhone service center. So many beautiful looking apartments. Now this is a very popular neighborhood to the best of my knowledge, because I'm not carrying around a map and I don't have my watch on, is that we are heading roughly south. This is the Palermo Cantina we're coming past. I'm not sure what road we're on. I'm gonna guess we're on Fitzroy. I will do my best to figure that out for you. This is the Grill Dandy over here on the left. I know the lens is getting covered in water. Can't be really helped today. Look at this. <laughs> he was ready. There is nobody filming. Valentina said she's never seen anyone film here. So that is, uh, I guess I'm a little bit of an anomaly. Look how beautiful these streets are though. Absolutely gorgeous, especially in the rain. Great mix of old and new buildings. Lots of water. It's been raining since yesterday. And this is the Fitzroy we're coming past. This is actually where Dominica and I had lunch today. The Von Berry house on Fitzroy. I've been having some battery problems on this trip. Fingers crossed that we're figuring out what's going on. Multiple cameras, multiple batteries having issues, so trying to track it down. I'm on the GoPro 11 right now. The Argentine experience. Lots of sushi places in this neighborhood. We were noticing that on, ah, we are on Fitzroy. That is correct. Beautiful shot of the city there. Oh, I just stepped into a lot of water because I wasn't looking. Ah, Thai Shiatsu Massage. I told Dominica that uh, probably a lot safer to go out and walk now because it's the rainy day. Oh, cute little, what a goofy restaurant. Oh, oh, what? The end Disney coffee. Okay, so random. All right, cute, cute, cute apartment buildings. What a neat city it would be to have a tiny apartment in. 
I can already certainly see why Valentina went out. <laughs> why Valentina chose this city as a place to be. After living in Merida for a while where it's so hot, getting a chance to be in the cold, I'm sure is really cool. That is a huge garbage dumper. Hope you can see that. Oh, and the bottom opens up. Okay, that's pretty cool. German Floors, the carpet company. All right, cool. All right, fancy home goods area. I chose the GoPro 11 because of battery issues. And uh, now I'm quickly realizing this is the one with the broken media door. And I'm in the rain, everything's really wet. Hoping I don't uh, short it out. The Pop Store and Almacen de Pizzas. Oh, that's a cute looking spot. And Pedidos Ja. There we got a burrito place, Nacho Tex Mex. So I was looking at my receipts because I know you guys like to know the prices of things. So I was checking the price of my uh, amoxicillin because I had gotten it in Nicaragua and it cost me like three or five dollars, somewhere in that range. This is a burger place here on the right. And uh, so I wanted to compare it because I had to replace them here because I left some of them behind. And I looked at the receipt and realized they didn't charge me for them at all. They charged us for everything else there, but not the amoxicillin. So I don't know what it would normally cost, but it was free for us. It was in a different part of the city. And two days ago, I can't find them again. So... So yeah, now what I don't know is if you're supposed to have a prescription for stuff or if it's kind of informal or I don't really know, but they sold it to me or gave it to me. So that's what we know. <clears throat> the Rebelda bar. Not to be confused with Build-A-Bear. Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> it's cold and wet everywhere. Cute place on the right, Bacano. All right, oh, we're, we're down to Costa Rica. Is the cross street here, the Hierro. I wasn't really expecting it to be raining quite as heavy as it is. I, I miscalculated a little bit on that, so. Sorry, everybody, but we are really enjoying our time here in Buenos Aires. So I'll point out, I'm recording this on the afternoon after the wedding. All right. Games, coffee, and tapas. I can't quite read it. Is it Dota? And it's a neat looking place next to the uh, Israel and Tepper architecture firm. Oh, this place is cute. La Celia. So yesterday was the wedding. We had a really good time. Today, first day that we have like time and no plans. Oh, look at this beautiful street. What street are we on? 
I got a truck coming, I gotta move. I don't see the name of the cross street. Most of these have the names of Central American countries through this region. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful tree line streets. And then it ends right down there. But I really don't see the cross street name. There's no signs here at all. Well, that's sad. Well, we're one south of Costa Rica, I think. We can look that up. How's our lens looking? Can you guys see where we're going? Are we all wet? No, it's not too bad. Here's a cute house nestled into the city. Check that out. Somebody scored big there. Or this one on the left, too. Imagine having a house house in this district. That'd be pretty crazy. So today we have some free time, but we couldn't figure out what we want to do, but it's so cold. Dominica didn't want to come out and do anything. So, so I said, well, I'll go out and walk. And uh, we were thinking about going to a show or something tonight, but we have not figured anything out yet. Big Ponds, looks like a burger place over there. All right, we are at Campo Bravo, Brave Countryside or Brave Field, depending on how you read it. And the Federal District restaurant over here, Temple, still no street signs. Don't exactly know where we are. Ah, we are on Honduras. So I believe the one without the label was actually Nicaragua. I know that it's in this area and I, I believe they're in order. Uh, so I'm walking, it's reverse, right? I think Panama is up top. Uh, we're at Paraguay. And then there's a few, then I think there's Panama, then Costa Rica, then Nicaragua, this is Honduras. And then I think El Salvador is gonna be next. Pretty sure it's going backwards, but we're we're upside down here in the Southern hemisphere. So it, it kind of makes sense. They're, they're in order going away from the equator. Oh, it's cold out here. I wish I had gloves. And I also wish I had a sweater. I see why people have those. <laughs> no mames way. That is uh, definitely a Mexican place over there. Pretty sure no one says no mames or way, except for Mexicans. El dolce far niente. Italian coffee in Buenos Aires. All right, here we are at Goriti. Okay. Traffic comes from the right, so we're good. The trip to Palermo here on the corner. All right, we got a step inside. My camera is ridiculously wet. So as I was heading out this morning, the GoPro Hero 13 was announced. No details yet, but the release date is the 4th, so in four days, from recording date you guys by the time you guys see this it'll already be out and announced we'll know all the details they have two new cameras coming out so i'm watching that i was about to do an order from the us so it looks like we'll have that sooner than later
We're at Jose A. Cabrera. These really are beautiful streets. I'm gonna get backed over. I love all the big trees. And I'm a rain guy, so. Woo. Oh, a lot of wind all of a sudden. I don't like the cold and the wind, but uh, I do like the rain. Now, from what I can tell, okay, that building, the Knob Hill building over there, very narrow, but what a cute spot. Cute, cute. But uh, this is actually an affordable area where you could reasonably live. Moderately, of course. Oh, this brick one on the left. Look how well done. Love the balconies. Perfect tree in front. Oh, we've got a fancy place here on the right. <gasps> and a puppy coming out. Lots of dogs. We're always seeing dogs. All right, there's a warehouse in front of us called Elasticos. All right, that kind of a major street and a little bit of an industrial zone, so I'm going to teleport us forward. All right, we're crossing this road. We're crossing Cordoba. This is a beautiful classic building over here on the corner in a very modern spot. You can see how wide this road is, but not very long. Just goes right down there. All right. We're still continuing down Fitzroy. I don't know where the neighborhoods change or the intra neighborhoods because all of this is Palermo. Oh, cute. Just overgrown nothing, but makes it look nice. We're definitely not in the best neighborhood here. It's been kind of eh for a bit. No people on the street. No really nice houses for a little couple blocks. This is Castillo, or Castillo, as they say here. All right, cross in a minute. This is a parking garage, Estaciona, Estacionamiento. Los hermanos sean unidos. The brothers will be united. Or the brothers will be one, technically. Oh, cool artwork in the parking garage area. All 
We actually had uh, dinner with a graffiti artist last night. Okay, cute little houses on the left. This one's for sale and it's called The Brick. How appropriate. Okay, we got a street on my right coming in at an angle. Very short street. That's the end of it right there. Or maybe it comes around the corner. Loyola or here Loyola the sh sound is so hard to get used to that looks like maybe a train overpass nice little cobblestone street here I feel like the east-west streets are nicer than the north-south ones maybe it's just because of the direction of the rain this is a school on the right that we're going past we are in Comuna Quince, the Commune 15. The wedding yesterday was at 14, 14. Ooh, bikes for going around the city. I think the playground over here is underwater. That's, that is a lot of water in the school playground. My gosh, they need to put in some drainage. What? They have some nice murals, but no drainage. They just put some pipes out here and go out to the street. That's, look, those are pavers going underwater. That's got to be like eight inches underwater. <laughs> If they got a storm like we got in Nicaragua, that whole thing would turn into a swimming pool. It's hard to show large amounts of the city because it's just such a huge city. You'll notice when we were out by the port, there were a million people out. People everywhere. Out here, very few on the sidewalks. It's rainy and cold, like obviously that plays a huge factor. People are hiding in coffee shops and we are after lunch and before Media Luna, but still, look at this cute doggy. When is Tardes? The evolution of the office. Apparently a office for rent building.
I feel as though we may have exhausted the cooler parts of Palermo. I don't know how far we're gonna have to walk before we get to something super cool again. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at the bottom of Fitzroy? I do believe we are. Okay, well, we've come this far. We are at Vera. Okay, one car coming. This, we're in a football area apparently. Ah, Via Crespo. We are in a different community completely. All right, this is the bottom of Fitzroy. I'm gonna bring out a map and figure out where we are and what's going on. Cute trees, it gets darker down there, must be taller buildings. And, uh, Oh, we've got, let's just go this block here and see where we are. There's a church there. I don't know what street we're on. Via Royal. Via Royal, I guess. <clears throat> okay, so I've heard that different parts of the city you can only support different football clubs and clearly we just entered into one of the football club zones Everywhere I look, I can see the yellow and blue Atlanta colors. So very interesting. Got very little traffic here. So I'm going to step out just a little bit and show you the street. 
and how it splits here. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a map. I'm gonna look at a map and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, I just crossed the street. We're back at this church. We're gonna go south just the tiniest bit because there's a park down here, a cool little restaurant here. So I did, I did check, this is the Via Crespo. So we are in a different part of the city. We are not in Palermo at this point. So this building with all the paint on the right is the actual football club for Atlanta. And we have a car for, this is the Belgian Super Express kind of thing, Mini Mart. It's a pretty serious uh, building over here. It's pretty cool. So hot dog is poncho in in Argentinian. So just be aware. Might need to know that. Ooh, this place is Hop and Central Pond. This is a bakery. Oh, they are very popular, clearly. All right. We got a big park across the way. Oh, but it is looking closed. I am not going to venture over just to find out it's closed. So we're just going to show you this intersection here. This is Corrientes, Avenida Corrientes. We're going to cross over. We're going to head uh, north again. We're going to go through the Via Crespo and back into Palermo. But I'm going to pause here for a second while I make the change. Okay, the street we are on is Dorego. And it is Dorego Park just behind me. But we're heading north now. We're kind of heading back, but not exactly. We're going to head off to the west uh, and then work our way back in Palermo. So hopefully we find some cool stuff. I mean, besides this doggy, who's clearly some cool stuff. What a cute dog. He is a football fan, I can tell. Hello, puppy. Oh. Fancy wine bars everywhere. Even in what feels like a slightly rougher part of town. So just for reference, that is the street we came down. Via Royal. Some really nice apartment buildings over here. On the left, the Torre Vuelta de Drago. Buenas. It's a pretty light rain at this point, but it's still raining. Like I said, a lot of European cars, if you are paying attention, Italian, German, French, they are everywhere. We've seen some Chinese.
but French seemed to dominate. There is most definitely an air of feeling like you're a part of Europe. I don't mean just like it feels similar to. I mean that in in because we spent a lot of time yesterday talking to uh, people who have always lived here and uh, Porteños, and uh, they definitely gave a general feeling of like. Buenos Aires is a European city that's simply separated by a long distance. Like they feel like a far-flung European city rather than a Latin American city that just has a lot of European influence. Which is an interesting way of seeing it and explains a lot of the things you see. The obsession with European automobiles and foods and uh, history, culture, the way that they view the rest of Latin America. They were talking about that, how badly their education system educated them as to their place within the Latin American ecosystem and how places like Central America. Willy? 23s. Yeah. Looks nice enough. Uh, and really seeing Central America as a different place, even though there's so much shared history, so much alike. As I say that, I cross the street. This is Guevara, so they're not completely disconnected from, <laughs> from up north. It's like a tiling and marble store or something. That's some neat little houses over here on the right. Check this out. And here on the left as well. Whew. The rain's not so bad, but the wind is picking up. It says pizza and empanadas. Oh, but it's all locked up. All these streets are so pretty. Okay, that building is cool. Kind of a metallic brown, almost a bronze, a little bit darker and then blackish. That's pretty cool. You can do dark colors here. It doesn't get as hot. Little puppy. Okay, now we've come into a cute little neighborhood. Now this is Loyola again, which we crossed earlier. We're walking up a much larger street now. And it veers, which you'll notice a little bit to the west. So it's, uh, we're not running parallel to where we were before.
If these little cobblestone side streets with all the trees and the wide sidewalks and the drizzle don't tell you how European it is, I don't know how to help you. A little Back to the Future mural over there, check that out. That is very nicely done. No idea what makes someone pick that as a theme for Buenos Aires, but you know, there's a lot of city to paint. You got room for everything. I still don't think my kids have ever watched the Back to the Future movies, but they've played through the Telltale video game, which is much longer, several times. I think we might do it again. It's been almost 10 years since we first played it. It was 2015, we were living in Nicaragua, and we started playing it. It is, to the best of my knowledge, the first video game that Liesl really controlled herself. She was finally big enough and it wasn't too hard and she was able to do basically everything in the game. And uh, she was six. And they just, both girls loved the game. It was, Lisa was old enough to control it. Luciana was old enough to understand it, more or less. Like, like watching a show. And, uh, and we played it as a family on an old, at the time it was already old. So maybe 2007 or 2008, giant 17 inch HP laptop that just, it was awful. And it was all falling apart. The hinges were getting bad. And uh, we had had, I'd had a terrible MacBook Pro from my terrible toxic office job when we were in Spain and Panama. And then when I gave up that job and said F them and took off to Nicaragua, uh, I had to give back the laptop, which was not a terrible thing as it was a terrible laptop. It was back before Macs were any good. It was just atrocious. And, uh, boy, it's funny the things that you remember. Uh, that is the, so that, that old MacBook, I played Tropico 4. I had played Tropico 3, somehow lost my place, decided to restart with Tropico 4, and played all the way through Tropico 4 back when I had that Mac. And my kids still remember me playing Tropico. It was the game that I played the, the last before they were old enough to play. So they remember it as like this inspiration. Now they were still, they were already into games, but it was like my last game on my own. And uh, I, it was, we found it so funny that I played through it just before moving to Nicaragua because it was so apropos. The Desembarco. And uh, so I played that on that Mac. We gave that Mac back to the office and I had to use this old HP that I had had from my own company. Ooh, it's loud. All right, we'll pick back up on the other side. All right, we just came from over there, crossed over here and we're back on our merry way. Check out that cute little building. All right, this is a different feeling street. So we got this old laptop and that is the, in the same week that we bought all the Nancy Drew games long ago, we got Back to the Future, the Telltale game. We thought the girls were gonna be into the movies and, you know, already at that age, Luciana was not into movies. She just never has been. And even ones that we really loved, ones that we were sure, how could she not love those movies? She just never did. It's, she's got a couple movies, almost all cartoons that she has liked over the years. How to Train Your Dragon, for example. And uh, even movies that she loved when she was little, like Harry Potter, she doesn't like anymore. It's uh, just never been her thing in any way whatsoever. She doesn't like most TV shows. She doesn't like movies. And uh, just, and I wonder how much I wouldn't like those things if I didn't have a lot of just spending time with my parents doing them when I was young. I quite often find movies really banal now and uh, often don't watch them. So I kind of get where she's coming from but she's more extreme than me in that particular way. 
But uh, Liesl has always liked some, but often with very varying taste, very eclectic taste. And uh, some that we really thought they would just gravitate to. How could they not? Uh, just never, never became something. All right, we got a market here, Mercado de la Pulgas. I think I have to go in. A lot of furniture and antiques, rugs. Oh, cool. Hola. Hola. Okay, that is quite large. It's like home furnishings, uh, antiques, furniture. Pretty neat. Now we're still walking by it. I can see in a lot of light fixtures. Got a thing on the right. Oh, you can see in still going on and on in there. Oh, the tapestries. Oh, cool place for decorating your house. Oh, we got a park here. Oh, wide open space. This is beautiful. We'll turn around here in a second. Just pop into this little space. Obviously, a lot of rain, everything's wet. No one's out. But, uh, okay, so that's the Mercado there. Oh, a little restaurant on the corner. That's a furniture factory direct over there. Kind of a neat district here. That brick conca restaurant looks really cool. Okay, so this says Información Periodista, so newspaper information or journalist information at El Nueve. <laughs> I'm on day six, I believe, of my bronchitis treatment. This is a big thing over here, El Nueve. It's uh, studios, so I'm guessing it's a TV station. Emilia Zeta, pottery and more. That was a cute little pottery place. Nice apartment buildings. Nice Frida Kahlo mural. Oh, a neat cafe down there.
a healthy bakery. All right, this is the audio visual district is what that says. Okay, that's neat. We're back at Goriti. We got some cool big buildings here. Holy cow. Too bad there's a construction wall blocking so much of it. But wow, that one over there, hopefully you can see me pointing. That one is so cool. This one's neat, but that one, wow. And that one's kind of cool too. And again, very European looking everywhere you go. Like everything. Like sometimes I feel like we could be in, you know, France or Italy, of course, Spanish influence. The Salvaje Bakery, the Savage Bakery. Uh, other times, honestly, it's like a British influence. Sapiola. Okay, we are at that one really big building. Oh, we are most of the way through the first battery, but it's held out so far, so that's good. This is like a very old factory or something, I'm guessing. Well, from the doors, maybe not a factory, maybe a really old office building. One of the things that certainly makes Argentina feel so European is its size. From a population perspective, it is similar in size to an Italy, a France, a Spain, an England. All of those countries are very, very roughly equivalent in total population. And all of those countries are large enough that they have everything of their own. They're able to manufacture all their own things, have the entire, excuse me, the entire modern ecosystem of everything you can imagine. All right, oh, that's a cute bakery on the bottom there. They produce their own foods. 
their own radio shows, television shows, books, literature, <coughs> movies, household goods. They may not make their own electronics and not always their own cars. Most of them do make their own cars, but they have their own construction industries, their own banks. There's enough, their own restaurant chains that are relatively large, their own styles of food that they can export, their own dance, flavors, music, everything. Everything that there is in a culture, they're able to have in a fully developed ecosystem. And Argentina is giant like that and has that, which is a bit less common in Latin America. It happens in Colombia. It happens in Mexico. Obviously, it happens in Brazil. But most of Latin America, the countries are quite a bit smaller and in most cases, quite a bit poorer. Right now, Argentina is in a crisis. And so everything is very, very cheap. But historically, Argentina is a very rich country and like rivaling the richest European countries and at time has been one of the richest countries in the world. So it has a completely different legacy and it has, oh, these are beautiful, Colegio Leon the 13th, Ober de Don Bosco. They have history in a way that most countries in the region don't. All right, I have no idea how much we missed because the camera turned itself off without telling me, said it ran out of battery, and then was on just as if nothing had happened. So I have no idea how much we missed. I didn't miss too much of the walk, but it's how much of the talking that we missed. All right, we're back hopefully with a solid battery. Hopefully I didn't miss too much. What I was saying is that Argentina being nearly 50 million people is so large that it has its own ecosystem of everything and creates its own culture, such as it has artistic expression periods. Like Argentina in the 1930s was an amazing art deco and, and jazz home and tango comes from here. This this really deep, deep culture that, that varies over time. It's not just a, um, and of course every country has this to some degree, but you don't really, uh, picture in Nicaragua, for example, the 1930s. Well, of course, it was occupied in the 1930s, so a lot of that potential history has been lost because it just didn't get to happen. They were not free to do so. By the way, I want to point out the Havana store across the way. That is a uh, Alfajore store. That is one of the most popular, it must be the most popular brand of Alfajores, or else I don't recognize other ones. And uh, this is Amena Bar. Ooh, I'm in the way. This is a beef store. Rice literally means beef. Havana looks really cool. Definitely want to check that out. Animal Organic Vineyards. Nicaragua lacks a bunch of that kind of stuff. It doesn't have its own world famous dance. It doesn't have, it does have world famous literature. We have Ruben Dario, but we don't have periods with huge numbers of, of artists or musicians in a similar genre, creating our own genres of things. Argentina has that as does France and Italy, but it's because they're big countries and they were stable for long periods of time. Uh, which allows them to have big peaceful periods of uh, art and discourse. And so that's something that's cool about Argentina is the sheer degree of that that you're able to get here in Latin America. And it certainly has to be a big factor in lending itself to that European feel. All those all that every single business you deal with is a and it's not just like so in nicaragua we have lots of our own nicaraguan businesses of course we have tip top for example but when you're dealing with tip top you're 
you have a big chain with deep pockets, but they don't have the same look and feel as giant European chains and businesses. And that is something that clearly we're getting from Argentina, this formal big company, big ecosystem feeling everywhere. Now there is a bridge that goes up somewhere that is closed for cars. Pedestrians can go over. That's interesting. There's a beautiful apartment building right there. All right, continuing on. I actually have no idea what time it is. It's probably middle of the afternoon. It is so dark and rainy that uh, a little bit lost as a time. Oh, there's a pet shop here. Get doggy supplies. Okay, not sure what street we're at. Well, we seem to have come to kind of the end of the road here. It's kind of turned into a parking spot. Oh, we, we hit the train. We hit the train. There's a cross over here to go to the other side of the tracks, which we're not going to do. I'm just going to show you the railroad tracks here. And we're going to turn and head to the right. Should be kind of east and kind of towards our part of Palermo. Yes, this is Guatemala that we're turning on. So we're in the right area, going the right place. Uh, Vietnam and Thai restaurant right there. So if we're at Guatemala, I assume in a little while we have to turn left and go up four or five blocks. No, it must be six or seven. So we have to get to Paraguay. Okay, this is still the audiovisual district. Still super cute cobblestone streets. This is Arevalo, uh, El Orno del Norte, the oven of the north. the little tiles on the sidewalk as very pretty hope you guys can see those these buildings over here very eclectic
Here's the fire department. This seems like a very nice area to live in. This is the Jaguar House Nail Salon. Okay, just caught me by surprise, I had to take a look. Got a lot of beautiful apartment buildings around here. Oh, cute little front door. What a mall electronics. All right. Flor Naranja Grow Shop. The Orange Flower Grow Shop. That's a pretty cute looking little shop. I kind of wish I could dive into some of these shops, but. Okay, this is a cute corner. I like all the old fashioned little stores. There's a little bit of the European look, but there's also a little bit old American from time to time. That is a secondhand and vintage shop in that beautiful old building over there. And, uh, Heading, heading north-ish. This is the Carnico Grill. There is a certain amount of obvious American influence on Argentina or, or completely valid, a shared influence that is caused by a great degree of Argentina and the United States lie in flipped latitudes. That is the number of degrees north that the United States lies 
Argentina lies the same amount to the south. More or less exactly, with Buenos Aires lining up with Dallas, a little bit of the country being north of that or warmer, and most of the country being south of that or colder. And like the United States, Argentina is got full of flat lands that are like the prairie, big mountains to the west, lots of coastline, huge population. You start putting all those things together and certain things, the way that houses are built, the way the weather impacts you, the way you do transportation, there's just a lot of things that are going to be related. One will learn from the other. Both will make the same discoveries, what materials make sense. And so there is, while Argentina has a tremendous European influence, there is also a clear, uh, maybe appreciation for what would almost qualify as Americana. It is super cute. I don't know if I can really get that very well and too close. And uh, so like some of those little shops on the corner, some of the little fruit and veg shops, they are very, very, very similar to what it would look like in the United States in old Rockwell paintings of America long ago. Or maybe not so long ago, 20s and 30s, 100 years ago. Kinda, kinda vibe. All right, I think this is Sharkas? Maybe we'll go up to this bigger road over here. Let's see what this is. Okay, we're just coming up on Angel Justiano Carranza. But what road is this? Perhaps Avenida Santa Fe? There we can see a bit of the city. You can see the highway going underneath a bridge over there. I'm gonna kind of lean off to the side here and check the map and figure out where I'm going. I think I recognize these buildings though. Okay, the streets did not go quite as I expected and I am already past Paraguay. So I gotta head back down. Wait us. This is a perfumery, and here's a car of four express. Okay, this is called the Fabrica de Pastas, and they are making fresh made pasta. That is amazing. That's the kind of thing I wish I had in a big city. Okay, this is Bompland, and this is where we turn south. This is a big pizza.
Uh, a vegan restaurant. It's closed up right now. Hopefully, not for long. All right, we got some cute apartment buildings. We walked by right down there earlier as we came too far. By the time we turned on Guatemala, we were already too far. The streets are in an odd order. That's a jamonería, a ham store, very common in Spain. The Trim Gentleman Barberia. Ha ha ha. Okay, I am pretty sure that this is Paraguay and that is my local bakery. Very, very sure. Hoping there's a sign somewhere to reinforce that this is Paraguay, but I'm super confident that it is. One thing I gotta say is all the streets around here, it's super like repetitive in most cases. Just a lot of the same place over and over again. It's a big city, so you're gonna get some of that for sure. But you know, you don't have the opportunities of a smaller city to have every little street be completely unique all right and i am back this is my apartment right here this is where we're staying we've not been able to see it from the outside yet really so you guys can see where we are all right guys thanks for joining me on the long walk today that was great we got to see at least two important neighborhoods of of Buenos Aires today. It was a good walk in the rain. I think we handled the batteries lasted well. We handled the rain well. Oh, got some cool, cool apartment buildings over there too. Hopefully we're gonna get a lot more of these. I'm doing my best to one, get some exercise and two, really, I've only got two weeks. I really wanna get to know Buenos Aires and Argentina and, and have like a lot of insight on food and, and how to do everything and when to consider and what to consider and all that. And we have friends here, so we're gonna spend a lot of time with them as well, which makes it a lot easier to really get in deep quickly. Uh, but this, is, uh, this has been a good walk. I'm gonna head up to the apartment and warm up and uh, maybe even film some more today. We're gonna go out and get some dinner. Thanks for joining me, like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you know what to do. Buy me a coffee at, yes, it's a website, buymeacoffee.com. Just type in that slash Scott Allen Miller and it brings up my page and you can, don't send me messages. I mean, feel free to send me messages there, but I see them like once a month. 
don't try to reach me. Use the email in the show description to email me if you need to reach me. Still, that'll take a few days, but do that. That's, that will, should get to me. If you have like an SBC Global or some like super terrible email, I can't respond to you. They're not modern email systems. They don't, ex they won't accept secure email. So move to Gmail or something if that's what you have. I've had a few people that I can't get back to. Some universities, like just, they don't have an IT department apparently. And so just, <laughs> try to use Gmail or something. Um, I specifically know SBC Global doesn't work, but buy me a coffee that helps support the show. Shoot me an email. Get down there in those comments. Let me know what you think. Ask your questions, all that kind of stuff, and I will see all of you tomorrow.